In a previous video, which I've linked here and below, I introduced HSRP, the first of multiple first hop redundancy protocols that I'll discuss in this series. In this video, we're going to discuss HSRP in more detail. Please make sure that you watch that previous video before you watch this video, otherwise it won't make much sense. So make sure that you understand the basics of HSRP. In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can force an election to take place where one router becomes the active router and another router becomes standby. I'm gonna show you how to set up preemption where you can force one router to become the active router. I'll also show you how to reduce the priority of an active router by monitoring a link. So you could monitor if a link is available. If it's not available, reduce the priority of the active router as an example. Again, please make sure that you've watched the previous video before you watch this video, otherwise it won't make much sense. Okay, let's get started. On router one, show run interface gigabit zero zero. That's the configuration on router one. Show standby gigabit zero zero. This is the group configured on gigabit zero zero. State is active, local router is active, standby router is router two. Current priority on the local router is 100. We see something similar on router two. Show run interface gigabit zero zero. That's the command that enables HSRP. Show standby gigabit zero zero. We can see that the local router is the standby router. Active router is router one. Okay, so on PC one, can we ping 8.8.8.8? .8 .8 .8? which is PC2. On router one, I'll shut the interface down. So active state has gone to init. On router two, notice router two is active. And on the PC, the pings are continuing. Notice we lost, I'll just pause that. Notice here we lost one ping. So sequence number nine dropped 10. Sequence 11 worked. So one ping was lost in the changeover from router one to router two. So just to prove the point again on router two, show standby gigabit is zero, zero. A local router is the active router, standby router is unknown. Let's see what happens when I no shut the interface on router one. So interface has gone up, we can see it says here, standby to active, but let's actually see what happens. So show standby gigabit zero zero. It says active router is actually router two. Standby router is unknown because the state is speak. It's still trying to work out what state it should be in. And notice it went to standby. So show standby gigabit zero zero. A local router is in standby. We can see that their active router is router two. Now that may work, but you may actually want router one to become the active router again. And the way to do that is to use preemption. So you configure preempt as a command, which basically forces control back to router one. We can also make sure that router one becomes the active router by setting the priority higher. By default, the priorities are 100. Election is based on highest priority if the priorities are the same highest IP address. But we can force it by saying standby one priority 150, standby one preemption. So notice it was standby, but what happens when I press enter now? Let's see if the state changes. You can see it has changed. So show standby gigabit zero zero, a local router is the active router, standby router is unknown. So I'm forcing the local router, router one, to become the active router by increasing its priority. So even though it has a lower IP address than router two, I'm making it become the active router by setting the priority higher. Now it did become the active router previously because it was the only router on the segment. The exam answer is highest IP address or highest priority wins. But typically if router one is the only router on the segment and becomes the active router and router two comes up, it's not gonna force control unless you enable preemption. So highest priority will win if the priorities are the same highest IP address. But real world is the router that's actually on the segment first 
and is elective, uh, elected as the active router becomes the active router and remains so. But in this case, we forced router one to become active because we specified a higher priority and we specified preemption. On router two, you also want to enable preemption because there are cases when you want it to take control when it has a higher priority. And I'll demonstrate that now. It's out of the scope for CCNA where we monitor interfaces. It's worth knowing about, but for the CCMP, you would need to know this, not for CCNA. So on router two, I'm gonna say standby one preemption to force preemption. So the only commands I've done on router two are standby one IP address, standby one preemption. And the reason for doing that is router one is currently the active router. But if I shut down an interface on switch two, we're gonna have traffic going from PC one to R1 and just dumped. So we don't want that. So on switch two, it's connected via gigabit zero zero to router one, gigabit zero one to router two. So what I'm gonna do is delete the link between switch two and router one. But before I do that, I'm gonna send a ping from PC1 to PC2. So on this link, let's delete the link and let's see what happens on the PC. Notice we stuck at sequence eight. Even though that link has gone down, router one is still the active router. So what we actually want router one to do is lower its priority when that link goes down. And to do that, we can implement interface tracking. So I could create a tracking object and track the line protocol of an interface. So on router one, we'll paste that command in. Track one, this is just a number. Interface, the interface that we want to monitor, which was that gigabit zero one interface, a line protocol. Line protocol will tell us if the interface is up or down. And then what we want to do is track that on the standby group and decrement the value by 100. So I'll type do show run interface gigabit zero zero. At the moment, the priority is this. So what we wanna do is lower that or decrement it by let's say 100 because router two has a priority of 100. So I just wanna make sure that the value of router one is lower than router two. So at the moment, show standby, gigabit zero zero, and that should be standby, zero zero. It's still the active router. So what I'll do is connect the link back. So this link is gigabit zero one on router one. So it's back to where it was before, but we are tracking object one. So notice show standby gigabit zero zero. We are tracking this object. State currently is up. Show track, let's say object one. Line protocol is currently up. If I delete that link, And this is unfortunately an issue with CML. It's not tracking the status of that link. So what I'll do is shut the link down, but typically in the real world, that interface status would go down. CM, this is a problem in CML, not tracking the interface properly. So I manually shut the interface down now and notice show IP interface brief shows me that the interface is down so now, show track one shows us that the line protocol is down, which means that show standby gigabit zero zero tells us that the local router is a standby router because its priority is 50. It's configured as 150, but we reduced it by 100 because we were tracking this interface. So I'll connect this back again and you won't see any difference because the interface is currently shut down. 
show IP interface brief. But if I no shut that interface, the interface should go up. And you can see it's changed state to up. It's up over there in the output. And notice HSRP has gone to active. So interface is once again up. Show standby. The local router is the active router because preemption is enabled and the priority is higher. And what should have happened is on the PC, the pings should have just continued. So let's prove that point again. Clear the screen. Ping PC2. What I'll do is go on to gigabit 01 and no shut it. Because the interface is being tracked, the priority goes down. We had some timeouts, but then the pings continued because the traffic is going via router two. So just to summarize, line protocol has gone down. HSRP changed to standby on router one. We can see that the local router is a standby router because its priority has been reduced. Router two has become the active router. You can see it there. So show standby gigabit zero zero. Local router is active. Priority is 100. The priority of router one is 50 because it lowered its priority. There are a lot of things you can do in HSRP. You can also change the timers so that things happen more quickly. So on router one, let's change the timer. First thing I'll do is no shut that interface. Go back onto gigabit zero zero. Standby one. A lot of options here, but let's change the timers. And with HSRP version two, we can use millisecond timers to make things faster. So we can set the hello interval to 15 milliseconds and the hold time to let's say 50 milliseconds. So set it to very low values. On router two, let's do something similar. So interface gigabit zero zero, paste that in. Show standby, gigabit zero zero. Hello time, hold time is that in milliseconds now. Previously, looking through the output, it was three second hello interval, 10 second hold time. So that means it only sent a hello every three seconds and it would time out after 10 seconds. Hence us losing some pings when forwarding traffic. The problem with setting it so low is notice we're having problems here because CML can't handle such low timers. So let's set it to 150 milliseconds rather. And I'll do that on router one as well. Set it to 150 milliseconds. Show standby gigabit zero zero. That is our hello interval and hold time. Let's see if that works on this router now. Show standby gigabit zero zero. That looks better. CML, because it's a virtual environment, is not sending the hellos quick enough, so things don't work. But hopefully now, if we shut the interface down, we will not lose as much traffic. So on router one, I'll shut gigabit zero one. On the PC, we don't seem to have lost any traffic at all. Notice the sequence numbers all look good. We went from sequence one all the way to 18. Nothing was lost because it switched over very, very quickly because we reduced the timers. Now again, you can do many things with HSRP. There I've shown you quite a few things. I've shown you basic HSRP. I've shown you preemption. I've shown you priorities. I've shown you how to track an interface. I've shown you how to set timers. Lots of options to optimize HSRP. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. Please consider liking this video and clicking on the bell to get notifications. I'm David Bombal. I want to wish you all the very best.